Did you know there's no such thing as a fish? Yes, really. Each and every sea creature has such wildly different DNA that technically speaking, there's no such thing as the species of fish because they're all far too different to one another to be classed under one word. As an example, a starfish technically has more DNA in common with a giraffe than it has with any other sea creature. So as you can imagine, that must mean there are a lot of very odd fish hiding in the waters of the world. And we're about to introduce you to some of them. These are the most unique fish in the ocean. Number 20. Sarcastic Fringe Head The Sarcastic Fringe Head is a tiny but interesting fish that dwells in the Northeast Pacific Ocean off the coasts of California and Baja. Combating males in this species are renowned for their amazing display actions while defending neighborhood territory. Two blinnies, like as the Sarcastic Fringe Head, live in burrows or tube-like structures dug out by other creatures. Shelters are constructed by burrowing clams or empty snail shells in the case of the species. Some people have even seen them living in soda bottles and other artificial materials. Female sarcastic fringe heads deposit their eggs in a male's shelter, much like other tube blennies, and the males defend them from predators and other dangers until they hatch. Female sexual selection fuels a system of ferocious male rivalry and territoriality, and male caustic fringe heads compete by opening their enormous lips in the direction of their opponents. The frightening coloring of the mouth, coupled with its enormous size, up to four times its closed size, allows the bigger male to assert control over the smaller one. The competitor's lips are often pushed extremely close to one another, occasionally touching. Without really fighting, the smaller person usually surrenders and then departs the area. So I just want to be clear with everyone. This is a fish that's actually kissing its rival, and it's sarcastic? That sums it up. I've found my personal favorite fish. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The Bumphead Parrotfish This is definitely a creepy fish. The humphead parrotfish, or green humphead parrotfish, is the strangest of all parrotfish. Not only is it the strangest, but it can grow up to 1.3 meters in length and weigh up to 46 kilograms, making it the biggest and heaviest of all parrotfish species. They have a sluggish growth rate and may survive for up to 40 years in their current state. Bumpheads don't actually achieve sexual maturity until later in life, resulting in poor replenishment rates. Despite this, they're not actually considered to be endangered. Bumpheads develop their alien-like bulbous foreheads as they get older, which gives them their nickname of Bumphead. To add to their long list of distinguishing characteristics, they have enormous beak-like front teeth that are nearly completely exposed since their lips only partially cover them. These teeth, I would say, are the strangest part of the fish because they just look so human-like. Number 18. The Spotted Handfish you know how when you look at an evolutionary scale of man, there's that fish climbing out of the water? It seems to me that this one is probably that connection because of all those cute little fish hands. Spotted handfish are tiny, reaching a maximum size of 12 centimeters in length, which means that they may fit comfortably into the palm of your hand. Each fish is covered with spots or stripes which are arranged in patterns that are unique to that particular species. They have enlarged pectoral fins, and they resemble hands, which they use to gently move over the sandy substrate, where they search for tiny crustaceans and worms, which they find in plenty. The spotted handfish is one of the most well-known inhabitants of the Derwent Estuary, which is an animal preservation in Australia. They are a really unique fish, not just because of their unusual and eye-catching appearance, but also because the overwhelming majority of them exclusively exist in the estuary and are thus critical 
practically threatened. It's estimated that there are less than 10 colonies. Spawning happens from September to October, during which time newly placed egg masses are connected to substrate life on the sea bottom, such as sponges, seaweeds, and in particular, sea tulips. Number 17. The Opa Speaking of fishes that help humans make the jump from microbe to homo sapiens, the opa is a warm-blooded fish. Discovered in 2015 by an NOAA research team, the fish is in fact able to use this warmth to its advantage. Though the fish's body temperature isn't the only feature that distinguishes it from the rest of the fishy friends down in the depths, the agile opa is quick and efficient, fluttering its bright red pectoral fins to race through the water. The opa's body is heated by the continuous flapping of its fins, which speeds up its metabolism, mobility, and response times. The opa has specialized blood arteries that transport warm blood to its gills in order to rewarm blood that cools when the fish breathes and takes oxygen from the water. It's only about the size of a big automobile tire. These heat exchanging blood channels provide a warm core body temperature, increase muscular output, and swimming capability. They also improve eye and brain function by reducing heat loss to the opa's chilly environment. Because the fatty tissue around its gills, heart, and muscle tissue serves as insulation against cold waters, the opa may remain in deep water longer without risking decreased function of its heart and other organs. Number 16. The Northern Stargazer the northern stargazer is a benthic species that spends most of its time on or near the sea floor and has adapted to living in the sand very well. The body is a bit elongated, which helps it to use its pectoral fins as shovels and allows it to bury itself in seconds. When the fish is buried, the eyes and nostrils are carefully placed on the top of the head, all to keep them above the sand. The coolest part about the fish, though, the fish has the unique ability to generate small electrical currents from a specialized organ behind its eyes. Thus, the name Stargazer. It's evolved to spend most of its existence buried in the sand, waiting to ambush and devour its victim whole. Its eyes, gill slits, nose, and the majority of its mouth are located on the top of its body, and its pectoral fins are capable of digging and burying. The stargazer, unlike other fish, breathes via its nostrils rather than its mouth. The fish features fleshy fringes around its mouth in order to keep sand out while it's buried. The stargazer has eyes that may protrude for a short distance, giving the appearance of being pursued for a brief period of time, all to enable the fish to look over the bottom. The stargazer does this by injecting liquid into the tissues behind its eyelids. Number 15. Anglerfish Because life in the deep water is challenging, many fish have evolved unique adaptations to help them eat and breed. Cue the Jaws music here. Because this fish has adapted some serious jaws to help itself out. These deep water anglerfish have in fact evolved to have these large mouths because there are just not a whole lot of prey around them at their depths. So their big mouths help them get what they can. They, like other anglerfish, have a lure that they employ to attract prey. The lure of the deep sea anglerfish contains microorganisms that produce their own light, and a deep water anglerfish can conceal or expose its aluminum lure by using a muscular skin flap. They effectively use this to attract their prey by pulsing the light and moving the lure back and forth. Sometimes even a mate is also attracted to the lure. Females are the only ones that match the aforementioned description. They are the ambush predators and also have illuminated lures. Males are very tiny seriously only about one inch big and do not hunt. They spend all of their time after hatching, looking for partners, biting on bigger females, and fertilizing their eggs. In many anglerfish species, the male develops a parasitic nature and never leaves his wife, sucking on her blood and essentially becoming a baby factory. Number 14. The Yellow-Headed Jawfish with a brilliant yellow head and a white or blue body, 
The yellowhead jawfish is truly a stunning fish, loving to dig in the seabed and preferring a 3 to 5 inch sand bed with broken coral and different grades of sand. And when frightened, they have this amazing ability to dash back into their burrow tail first. Now you won't see them swimming about too often, they like to hang out vertically above or within the burrow, just their yellow heads protruding. It's very cool to see a colony of them in a tank observing you from above their holes. These little guys actually make great pets as well, and should get along great with other calm marine fish. Though different jawfish species, on the other hand, may not be able to coexist happily in the same tank. When initially introduced, they've been known to leap out of the tank, so you'll need a nice tight-fitting hood with no escape routes. Although, you should note that even if they seem to be disease resistant, you should still take precautions and utilize a quarantine tank before introducing them into your main tank. The yellowhead jawfish is a carnivore, and that requires meaty items in its diet. To encourage them to eat, you may need to place the food near the burrow entrance at first, and they may grow less timid and emerge out of the burrow to feed after they've gotten accustomed. They may pinch and devour tiny crustaceans, so you should be cautious. Number 13. The Cuttlefish these sea chameleons are among the biggest cuttlefish species, growing up to 60 centimeters in length and weighing up to 5 kilograms. This magnificent creature's journey to the waters of Australia is only for the purpose of spawning. They flock in their tens of millions every year between May and August to mate and breed producing a spectacular sight of clever games, predation, underwater light shows, and colorful kaleidoscopic displays. Cuttlefish are clever animals that can alter their color, shape, and texture to resemble rocks, sand, or seaweed as they travel around the bottom. Because men outweigh females, there's an intense and frantic rivalry amongst them for mating rights, resulting in bizarre and spectacular behavior. The cuttlefish connects its eight arms and two tentacles for head-to-head -head contact during mating. The males, sliding their sperm packets into the female's mouth and fertilizing their eggs. The female lays tear-shaped eggs on the undersides of rocky ledges and in rock crevices where they hatch after three to five months. It's thought that they gather here in such huge numbers because it's the only place in the region with appropriate rocky ledges for laying eggs. Because commercial fishing has almost wiped out this once-in-a-lifetime occurrence, the cuttlefish are protected during their mating season, which runs from May to August. Number 12. The Stonefish now, allow me to introduce you to, ladies and gentlemen, the most poisonous fish in the sea, the stonefish. The venom generated by stonefish is among the world's most poisonous, and it's deadly to humans. A significant quantity of anti-venom must be administered quickly in order to reverse the symptoms, which begin with severe agony and swelling. These symptoms may quickly progress, resulting in paralysis, tissue necrosis, and possibly heart failure. Stonefish are often trodden on due to their invisibility, which triggers the venom sacs. Stonefish have 13 spines that run down their backs, each having venom glands at the base, and they do not utilize their venom for hunting. It's only only used as a defensive mechanism and is released when pressure is applied to their spines. The stonefish's food consists mostly of different shrimps and other fish, since they're carnivores, and they can use the element of surprise all to attack their victim because of their outstanding camouflage abilities. They wait patiently for prey to swim past before attacking and swallowing it in as little as 0.015 seconds. They're usually slow swimmers, despite their amazing speed. Stonefish may also live for up to 24 hours by collecting oxygen via their skin as long as their surroundings stay wet. This is common with receding tides, which partly exposes them, but still, they will die from asphyxia and dehydration after that. Number 11. The Man of War 
Although the Portuguese man of war is often mistaken for a jellyfish, it's really a saphinophore, a kind of animal that's closely related to the jellyfish. A saphinophore is unique in that it's made up of a colony of specialized, genetically identical individuals known as zooids, or clones, who all have different shapes and functions but operate together as one. Each of the man of war's four specialized sections is responsible for a particular job like flotation, capturing prey, eating, and reproduction. Man of wars who are mainly found in tropical and subtropical waters are driven only by by winds and ocean currents and may float in armies of up to a thousand or more. The man of war is distinguished by its balloon-like float, which may be blue, violet, or pink, and rises up to six inches above the waterline, like an 18th century Portuguese vessel under full sail. Long strands of tentacles and polyps lurk under the float each measuring 30 feet in length and extending up to 100 feet. Their stingers are tiny capsules with coiled barbed tubes that release venom capable of paralyzing and killing tiny fish and crustaceans. While the sting of the man of war is seldom fatal, it is unpleasant and produces welts on the skin. Number 10. The Gulper Eel one of the strangest deep-sea creatures on the list is the mysterious gulper eel, often known as the pelican eel. The gulper has a long, thin body that undulates back and forth to travel through the water, much like a regular eel. They belong to an order which includes 800 species of genuine eels, including moray and garden eels. They are black in color and grow to be around 2 to 3 feet long, which isn't much in comparison to other eel species. In fact, the biggest eel in the European conger can grow to be over 20 feet long. Gulper eels are named for their enormous gulping jaws, which look like an eel mated with a huge black balloon. So what gives the gulper their peculiar adaptation? Gulper eels, like pelicans, and the source for its other name, may scoop water into their mouth and swallow their prey whole. They mainly eat crabs, fish, and cephalopods, although some experts think their big mouth actually enables them to go for bigger fish if food is scarce. Because these eels are so uncommon, we don't actually know much about them. They are nevertheless distributed all over the globe and are classified as a least concerned species by the IUCN, which means they're not believed to be in danger of extinction. Number 9. Leafy Sea Dragon Sea dragons are some of the world's most elaborately camouflaged animals. They're ideally equipped to blend in with the seaweed with gossamer, leaf-shaped growths covering their whole bodies. Leafy sea dragons are closely related to seahorses and pipefish and are found only in the seas off the coasts of South and East Australia. The body color of leafies ranges from brown to yellow with magnificent olive-tinted appendages. The leaf-like features, on the other hand, are not utilized for swimming. This species moves about by using two thin fins, one pectoral and one dorsal, that are nearly translucent. Sea dragon males, like seahorses, are in charge of procreation, and the male sea dragon has a spongy brood patch on the underside of its tail, similar to seahorses, whereas females deposit their bright pink eggs during mating. During the transfer from the female to the male, the eggs are fertilized. The males incubate and then bring the eggs to term, eventually releasing tiny sea dragons into the ocean after four to six weeks. Sea dragons have a diet that consists of mycids or sea lice, which are small crustaceans. Other creatures may prey on them, although it's actually unknown. However, divers who want to keep them as pets, on the other hand, often take them in. In fact, by the early 1990s, such takings had dwindled their numbers to the point that the Australian government had declared the species extinct. Their populations have been harmed by pollution and habitat degradation, and they're now classified as near-threatened. Number 8. The Humphead Wrasse This fish kind of looks like some kind of abstract sculpture of a fish, but in reality, it's an absolutely enormous creation. These enormous multicolored reef fish have been known to grow up to 7 feet in length, 
And the crazy thing about this fish is that sometimes the female can actually transform into a male. During this process, she will also change her coloration from a rusty red-orange to a vivid blue-green. The bumpy thing on the forehead of older males is more noticeable than that of younger fish as well. They feed marine invertebrates, including some toxic prey, and they reside in and around surrounding reefs. The humphead wrasse is a game fish that's only of a small commercial importance. Although the flesh of this fish has long been prized for human consumption, it can be seen alive in Hong Kong fish markets commanding prices of up to $100 per kilogram. Though you might want to be careful when you eat it because it's actually a very toxic fish. The humphead wrasse is a fish that's regularly seen in public aquariums and is considered important for ecotourism in diver-friendly environments. Because of the significant tourist benefits of conserving the species, conservation has been promoted. Number 7. The Red-Lipped Batfish if the fringe heads should be kissing any fishes, it should totally be the red-lipped batfish. Just look at those juicy fish lips. The red-lipped batfish is a bottom dweller that may be found on the sandy bottom of reefs or on the ocean floor, closely related to other batfish, but is in fact entirely unique to the Galapagos. The red-lipped batfish has a light brown body color with a grayish back and a white stomach. Starting at the head and running all the way down the back to the tail, there's typically a dark brown stripe made up of brown dots on the upper side. The red-lipped batfish's snout and horn have a brownish color. The batfish has brilliant, almost fluorescent red lips that appear as if it just had a bloody meal or is wearing some kind of extremely brilliant lipstick, as the name implies. Another peculiar feature of the red-lipped batfish is its ability to fly. The batfish's fins are better suited to function as a weird kind of legs rather than for swimming around the bottom in search of food. And these legs are used to walk and perch as the creature examines its environment. It also features an elysium structure on its head, which is believed to be used for enticing prey. The species is a piscivore and insectivore that eats tiny fish and crustaceans such as shrimp and mollusks. Number 6. The Goblin Shark And now we're back to the absolutely terrifying fishes that you wouldn't want to poke with a 10-foot pole, let alone kiss on the mouth. Which is perhaps the most terrifying and most noticeable physical characteristic of the Goblin Shark. The rostrum, aka its head, is covered with unique organs that assist these sharks to find food in low-light environments by detecting the electric fields produced by other fish. It's one of the few shark species whose teeth are visible while the mouth is completely closed. Goblin sharks, in other words, can't really fit all of their teeth into their jaws. Because live goblin sharks are seldom seen and virtually never recorded, much of what scientists do know about them comes from their inadvertent capture in fisheries aimed at other species. They're said to be active predators that eat a variety of fish, squids, and pelagic crustaceans, and they resemble something out of an alien movie rather than a shark while eating. Internal fertilization is used by goblin sharks to mate and give birth to a limited number of quite big offspring, and despite the fact that they give live birth, these sharks don't actually have a placenta to link them to their offspring. Instead, throughout the gestation stage, the mother most likely feeds her unfertilized eggs to her young, which they actively consume for nutrition. Young goblin sharks are ready to hunt as soon as they are born. Number 5. The Fangtooth Fish Fangtooth fish are black in color and have a hideous look, like many other deep sea animals. The fangtooth fish, just like the angler fish, has a large jaw with massive teeth. In fact, the fangtooth possesses the biggest teeth of any known fish in relation to its body size. Their lower jaw's fangs are so enormous, in fact, that specific receptacles on each side of their brain had to develop in order to accommodate them. The fangtooth fish is a kind of fish that may be found all over the globe, categorized as a bathypelagic fish since it dwells in the ocean's bathyal zone. 
The Bathiel Zone is a deep marine area extending from 3,300 to 9,800 feet below the surface. Although it may seem like a long way down, the Bathiel Zone isn't even close to the ocean's bottom. It actually resides above two other zones, which are two of the ocean's deepest levels. It is, however, so deep that no light actually penetrates the area. Unfortunately, scientists don't really know much about them since they're nocturnal deep sea creatures who are difficult to research. Adult fangtooth sharks eat tiny fish, although they've also been observed eating bigger squid. Scientists aren't really sure, but for now, they think that the fangtooths migrate in a pattern known as diurnal vertical migration, meaning that they eat at night on the surface before returning to the depths before the sun rises. Number 4. The Ocean Sunfish Has anyone here ever seen the Elephant Man? Well, this fish kind of looks like it has the same disease as John Merrick. And if you don't know this, you should totally look it up, because it's amazing. The ocean sunfish, also known as molas, are the heaviest of all bony fish, reaching 14 feet vertically and 10 feet horizontally and weighing over 5,000 pounds in the bigger individuals. Sharks and rays are cartilaginous fish, therefore they may be very large, and ocean sunfish may get infected with skin parasites to the point that they may attract tiny fish or even birds in order to eat them. In an effort to shake the parasites, they'll even break the surface up to 10 feet in the air and land with a splash. They're awkward swimmers, guiding with their clavis and waggling their enormous dorsal and tail fins in order to move, and jellyfish are their preferred diet although they may also consume tiny fish, zooplankton, and algae in large quantities. As for now, they're not dangerous to humans, although they are quite inquisitive little guys and often approach divers. Number 3. Blobfish Now, yikes, because this one wins for the eeeeweest fish on the list, the blobfish. Now, if being called a blobfish wasn't all that awful enough, the rest of its family isn't really any better. The blobfish belongs to a family of fish that's often referred to as fathead sculpins, owing their large heads and floppy look. Around southeastern Australia and Tasmania, blobfish dwell in water just off the ocean bottom. The water pressure at depths of 2,000 feet or more is crushing, more than 60 times that of the surface you'd probably be squashed into a blob if you even tried to go down that far. They usually float around along the sea's bottom, devouring whatever floats directly in front of them and is actually tiny enough to fit into their jaws. The blobfish's body is mostly made of gelatin, having few hard bones. This is advantageous at the crushing depths where it dwells because it can avoid being crushed by water pressure since it's composed of gelatinous blobby substance. Its body composition provides it with exactly the perfect amount of buoyancy in order to allow it to float around the seafloor without exerting any kind of real effort. Imagine just throwing a water balloon into a pool full of people. It would simply float around on the pool floor. And the same thing occurs with the blobfish, but without the pool and the crowds. Number 2. The Yellow Boxfish Yellow boxfish belong to the boxfish family. Imagine that. They can be found in reefs all across the Pacific and Indian Oceans, as well as the Atlantic Ocean's southern reaches, and may grow up to 45 centimeters in length. Oh, and guess what? It's box-shaped just as the name implies. It's a brilliant yellow hue while it's young, though the brilliance does diminish with age, and extremely old box fishes will be blue-gray in hue with fading yellow, just like the rest of us. Its diet consists mostly of algae, although it will also eat sponges, crabs, and mollusks. When it's agitated or wounded, it can actually produce a toxic protein from its skin which may kill any of the fish who are in the area. The brilliant yellow coloring and black dots serve as a warning coloration to any prospective predators. They're lonely creatures, seeing as how their breeding takes place in tiny groups of one male and two to four females in the spring. What a lucky guy. Oh, and here's a little fun fact for you. Mercedes-Benz actually debuted the Bionic Concept vehicle in 2006, and it was inspired by the form of a yellow boxfish. 
Due to the remarkable quickness with which boxfish move, it's believed that their form was aerodynamic and self-stabilizing. Scientists actually think that the boxfish's agility is due to a combination of aerodynamically unstable body and the way the fish utilizes their fins in order to move. Number 1. The Psychedelic Frogfish Frogfish in general are amongst the more weird animals on the planet since they lack scales, have a variety of appendages and growths on their body, and are often coated in algae. Though the psychedelic frogfish, on the other hand, is unlike any other frogfish. This fish features a big flat face, beady blue eyes, and a huge mouth, and most tellingly, a striped white-orange tan pattern that apparently enables it to blend in with nearby coral. It was first found in 2009 in the seas of Indonesia, and the psychedelic frogfish also has a small luring appendage on its forehead that mimics a wiggling worm for any prospective prey that isn't sufficiently captivated. The psychedelic frogfish has only ever been observed alive in Ambon, and they don't actually seem to get much larger than 10 centimeters in length. Their remarkable coloration is believed to resemble multiple species of coral and provides them with great concealment. And as for the psychedelic part of this froggy's name, well, just look at the thing. It looks pretty crazy, right? On top of its psychedelic skin, the psychedelic frogfish is one of the world's most rare and difficult to find fish since it can only be found in one location, the limited regions of Indonesia's Ambon and Maluka Islands. The significance of preserving the ocean's coral reefs from climate change and human activity cannot be overstated as researchers strive to learn more about these amazing angler fish. Seeing so many crazy and beautiful fish is refreshing, right? Kind of makes you think about how much of the world that we actually know nothing about. And that, my friend, is a lot. Which of these fish did you find most fascinating? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.